Well, the field is set, 40 cars here on pit lane on a very hot Daytona morning. The Firecracker 400 with close to $100,000 in prize money at stake. But the big story here today is the heat. The drivers are fearful that with the windows down, they themselves may be adversely affected as well as their machines. And we'll find out all about it as soon as the race gets underway. And now we move to the pace car and Mr. Bill France for the words to get going. And there they go, the racing engines of 40 stock cars underway now. They'll be moving out and we'll be back in a minute. And now the field is ready to move out for the beginning of the Firecracker 400, the big 4th of July occasion here at Daytona Beach, Florida. There's the field of cars. On the front row, remember, the pole sitter is Cale Yarborough in car number 21, and next to him, Bobby Isaac in number 71. Cale, the winner of one super speedway race so far this year, in number 21 there with the gold numerals. Isaac, the leader for the Grand National NASCAR Championship, conducted on a point basis. However, he's only 10 points ahead of James Hilton, and should Hilton finish ahead of Isaac today, he would take the lead in that battle. The big question right now, however, is who's going to win this one? Well, there are some of the people, the many thousands who have gathered from all over the South, actually, to see this race today. And the car is now on the race course. Cale Yarborough and Bobby Isaac on the first row. A field altogether of 40 cars. They qualified on Wednesday, Thursday, and yesterday to fill out the field. On the first row, as I said, Gail Yarborough, low in car number 21, and on the high side, number 71, Bobby Isaac of Catawba, North Carolina. Moving back to the second row in car number 98, we'll have Leroy Yarborough, no relation, from Columbia, South Carolina. Car number 40 is Pete Hamilton, the leading money winner so far this year from Dedham, Mass. Row three, David Pearson, last year's Grand National Champion in car number 17 and Charlie Glotzbach of Edwardsville, Indiana in car number 99. Moving to the fourth row now, it's car number 72, Benny Parsons, the former cab driver from Detroit, Michigan. And number six is Buddy Baker, a race driver and son of a race driver from Charlotte, North Carolina. Number 32 is Dick Brooks, last season's Rookie of the Year. Number 22, Bobby Allison from Hueytown, Alabama. Here we have Richard Petty. Richard in row six today. He couldn't qualify on the first day. Qualified fastest on the second day. It's a little bit back in the pack. He'll have some cars to pass. And next to him, number 28, is the comeback kid, formerly the top driver in the NASCAR circuit, Fred Lorenzen of Elmhurst, Illinois. That was number 28. Number 48 is James Hilton of Inman, South Carolina. Number 30 is Dave Marcus of Warsaw, Wisconsin. Moving to row eight now, we have the other half of the Allison brothers. Number 27 on the low side there is Donnie Allison of Hueytown, Alabama. Number 10 is... The oldest driver on the NASCAR circuit, that is, if Wendell Scott isn't, still champion of Norfolk, Virginia. Row 9, we'll have car number 64, Elmo Langley, number 5, Buddy Harrington, putting down the rest of the field for you as they're going to take another lap here. Row 10 will be Cuckoo Marlin, there's a name for you, car number 07, and Frank Warren of Augusta, Georgia. Row 11 will be Dr. Don Scar, a medical doctor from North Miami Beach, Florida. What is, what is that, something more about him as we go along. And Jim Vandiver of Charlotte, North Carolina. Row 12 will be Neil Castles and Joe Frasson. Row 13, Ben Arnold and Larry Pomel. Row 14, J.D. McDuffie and Bill Cyphers. Row 15, Friday Hassler and John Sears. Row 16, Johnny Halford and James Thomas. Row 17, Cecil Gordon and Bobby Mossgrover. Row 18, Ed Negre and Roy Main. Row 19, Bill Shirey and Gary Squee. Row 20, Wendell Scott and Henley Gray. That's the field of 40 cars for the 1970 running of the Firecracker 400. It's the 4th of July, and remember the temperature hovering somewhere near the 100-degree mark. The humidity is about the same. 
Mikhail Yarbrough is sitting on the pole, qualified at a speed of 191.640. That is a qualifying record for this race, but not for the Daytona International Speedway. Here's a good look at the field, coming right at you. Number 36 there is Dr. Don Carr. In that car is not only the doctor, but also a microphone attached to his racing helmet. We hope that he'll be able to talk to us during the race. So, Sam, may I, for a little added feature today on Wide World Sports. This time, I think we're going to get a start. They're in turn three right now, going up on the high banking of more than 30 degrees here. They're flat out at all times on the Daytona International Speedway. The driver never lifts his foot unless there's trouble ahead or unless he's coming into the pits for some reason. Up on the high banking now and into turn four, which is usually a lot of action. A dangerous part of the race course coming out of turn four here. There is the flag man, the green flag standing by. The field headed down the straightaway towards the start-finish line, and now the tension really builds. They're going to be racing in a matter of seconds. Green flag out, but he hasn't dropped it yet. It could be he's going to give them one more lap, or it could not be. No, he's just giving them a signal to stay in line, stay in line. The pace car's on the track. Green flag is out, and they're racing. Bobby Isaac going for the lead into turn one. And down low, Leroy Yarborough getting past Cale Yarborough. And in between them goes Pete Hamilton. Pete Hamilton, the blue car, has taken the lead. Pete Hamilton into the first ten, turn with Bobby Isaac right behind him. And then we have Cale and Leroy Yarborough racing side by side. David Pearson is in fifth place right now in car number 17. And Buddy Baker is moving up into a good position. So the leader is the leading money winner of the year, Pete Hamilton of Dedham, Massachusetts. A long way from home on the southern stock car racing circuit. Right with him, remember, is the man leading the NASCAR point standings so far this year, Bobby Isaac, in car number 71. Completing very soon here the first lap of this race, two and a half mile race course. The speed's around 185, 190 miles an hour. It's Hamilton, Isaac, Cale Yarborough, David Pearson, and Buddy Baker. Leroy Yarborough has dropped back a little bit. Buddy Baker really moving into the picture now. Pete Hamilton, the leader, on the second lap. Isaac still right with him on his left rear bumper. Cale Yarbrough fighting to hold on to third place. You're looking at them on the back stretch now, flying down there at about 200 miles an hour. Hamilton in turn three. Isaac right with him. Buddy Baker now trying to take third place, and he does from Cale Yarbrough. With the car into the pits already. Not one of the leaders, it's Bill Jarry in car number 74. The end of lap two coming up. A close lap, Pete Hamilton the leader, Isaac second, Buddy Baker third, Cale Yarbrough fourth, David Pearson fifth. And Chris, it looks like we may have a real wild Fourth of July here in Daytona. Well, since the first lap was turned at 185.567 miles an hour, Jim, a new record for the first lap of competition. That's the way Hamilton is really going. Look at that Buddy Baker in that wing of Dodge going for the lead right now. Car number six is Buddy Baker, and he's moved past Isaac. There is Cale Yarbrough with a white car. Car number 21. But out in front, Buddy Baker, son of Buck Baker, a former great stock car racer. Buddy, who's only won two NASCAR races, in, and now he's in his 12th season of NASCAR racing. He's had a lot of bad luck along the way set the pace in many of them, Jim, and he's due for better luck the way he's been driving in a finely tuned Cotton Owens Dodge. So the early racing goes on at Daytona, and there's the way they stand. We'll be back for more of the Firecracker 400 in a minute. First place, and Cale Yarbrough, you see, right behind him in that white car, number 21. Third place, Leroy Yarbrough, no relation. You must know that by now if you've been watching Wide World Sports for uh, some months or years. And in fourth place, car number 40, Pete Hamilton. There's still at least 10 cars who have a real solid chance of taking the lead sometime in this uh, automobile race. But you can say that some slower cars are beginning to relapse. Jim, it seems that the rule that 
forces the windows to be down, has not affected the speed of these cars. They're going at a record-breaking pace out there, and this is the first stock car race at the Daytona International Speedway for the driver's side window down. And that is a new safety measure in the regulation of these this year, right? That's right. They don't want the glass uh, all over the track in the event of an accident. The drivers objected to it. They felt that the uh, air rushing by and turbulence within the car would be detrimental, but it does not hurt the speed at all. Okay, here's a great race for third place right now between number 98, Leroy Yarborough, and number 40, Pete Hamilton. Hamilton in a blue car with the wing on the back. Leroy Yarborough just in front of him. Leroy in a 69 Ford. Pete Hamilton in a 1970 Plymouth. Now back up in front again is Buddy Baker in first place. Carol Yarborough is second. On this tremendously hot, muggy afternoon in the south. There should be a large attrition of cars in this race before it's over because it's really very, very hot. Jim, down in the pits just before the start, it was 94 in the shade. And there goes Kale, right past Buddy Baker, taking over the lead. So we've had another change for the lead in the very early going down here. Kale Yarbrough, who uh, was the top driver two seasons ago, didn't have too good a year last year, but uh, in 1970, he's been coming back. Buddy Baker, as we said, has been a contender many times for the last 12 seasons. But he's only won two races and hasn't won one in about two years. Whatever advantage the wing uh, gives the Dodge and Plymouth drivers on the back, the slope nose configuration is a disadvantage, Jim, because of the heat. There's not much air gets into the cool the engine, and they cannot draft for more than two or three laps, otherwise the engine begins to overheat. And now it's Buddy Baker. Perhaps drafting just a bit on Kale Yarborough as he drops back into second place. Letting Yarborough set the pace just a little bit. And now here's the battle for third again. Number 98, Leroy Yarborough. Then number 40 is Pete Hamilton. Real good racing as these two battles go on here. The first and second for third and fourth. And David Pearson moving into contention very much. He's in car number 17. Back up in front again for Kale Yarborough, Timmonsville, South Carolina. And Buddy Baker. Notice the back end of Kale's car slipping a little bit. The hotter the day, the slipperier, or as the drivers say, the greasier the track. And it's evident in watching them get through the corners that the back end wants to slide up. They've really got a handful, Jim, controlling these 3,900-pound cars. Up on the high banking again they go. On the east and west turns, the banking here is 31 degrees. And on the grandstand turn, which looks like a straightaway in most places, it's 18. But now again, the battle for third, of, third place. Pete Hamilton trying to move ahead of Leroy Yarborough. Getting a little squirrely there. Boy, oh boy, look at that. It looks as though they may have touched there. Hamilton is not letting Yarborough get by. The youngster from Massachusetts is showing the old pros that he's got the stomach for this kind of racing. He's been doing that for a while now. Back up on front, you see, Kale Yarborough and Buddy Baker as we go back and forth between these two battles that are simultaneously going on. We're still in the early going of the Firecracker 400 at Daytona Beach, Florida on this 4th of July, 1970. There's that 31 degree banking I mentioned a moment ago. They really hang them right up on there. It's flat too, Jim. It has no parabolic arch to it. It's a slab-sided banking which allows the drivers to run above one another without having to have a higher speed to take the high line. You can see that Pete Hamilton is now taking out after the leaders, having passed Leroy Yarbrough. A look at some of the crowd, more than 55,000 people who gathered here today. The cars are expecting to take, or would hope to take, just four pit stops in this race during the 400 miles. Right, Chris? That's if there are no yellow flags. Yet. Right, right, right. Four scheduled pit stops for fuel and other reasons. A good look at Kale Yarbrough's car flying by you. averaging 187 miles an hour right now, Jim. Tremendous speed and still with a good deal of fuel in the car. 22 gallons in each tank and it's six pounds a gallon. It's a heavy load out back, but it helps give them traction. The car coming into the pits is Carol Yarbrough. So here is the first major development in the race. Carol Yarbrough, who had been leading, comes into the pits, and this is not a scheduled pit stop. It's too early for that. We have a clock running to see uh, just how fast it will be. 
They did put up a sign to call Kale into the pit. And we got to look at you down there, Chris, for just a moment. The clock's still running, and this is longer than it should be. Normally about 21, 22, 23 seconds for these top pit crews. And Kale is out of the car. There you see him. This is not any minor problem. This is big trouble. It could be that Kale Yarborough is out of the race. Meanwhile, on the track, Buddy Baker is still the leader. Pete Hamilton now second, and Leroy Yarborough is third. And there is Buddy Baker. And he is coming into the pit. So the first two cars have pitted early in the race. That makes Pete Hamilton the leader. Leroy Yarborough second. And we'll be back again in another minute. Again, we're back at the Daytona International Speedway, and there now is the new leader in the Firecracker 400, Leroy Yarbrough in car number 98. Kale Yarbrough in number 21 had engine problems and is out of the race. Buddy Baker, who pitted early, is back on the track, and now dropped back to third in the day behind Pete Hamilton in car number 40. Richard Petty in number 43 is in fourth position. Behind him, number 17, David Pearson. He's a man to watch last year's Grand National Champion. There's a new routine going on in the pits today, Jim. When the car stops for fuel and tires, the pit crews squirt water from a pressurized hose into the radiators to cool the car down. It's that hot out here. Well, there's Leroy Yarbrough. It's too bad that you can't see these drivers when they're in the automobiles because uh, uh, each one is a different kind of man, a different personality. Leroy Yarbrough, for example, looks like he's right out of going with the wind these days. He's got long sideburns. Looks for all the world like a kind of modern day Red Butler. He is the leader in the race right now. Leroy Yarbrough, who was the big man in NASCAR racing last season. This year he hasn't had quite that much luck. The race, Jim, is being contested at a record speed. The first 10 laps were reeled off at 187.110 miles an hour. At 20 laps, it was 187.304 miles an hour, also a record. And there is car number 36, that's Dr. John Carr. Remember, he's got a microphone on, and when things settle down just a little bit, we're going to try to get a report from him right from his automobile while he's on the track. The good doctor used to splitting his mind into many compartments for consultations, operations, and things of that nature. So he can handle the microphone in the race car. There's the move over flag being given to some slower cars in the race. Leroy Yarbrough is the leader now, remember. Kale Yarbrough having dropped out of the race. Pete Hamilton is second, Buddy Baker third. And here comes Pete Hamilton into the pit. So it looks like that heat is going to start giving problems in this race very, very early. And when the hood goes up, that means this is not routine. And look out, there's a blown engine on the track. That's number 72, Benny Parsons. Benny Parsons, who used to drive a taxi in Detroit, Michigan, is again polluting the air, this time of the state of Florida, by blowing his engine, spewing oil and probably some debris on the racetrack, and that means that the yellow flag comes out. One of the problems Benny talked about before the race was the noise. He said the noise of the Hemi engine cars is really bothersome. Well, there is his car. And hey, Chris, let's go down to you in the pit. Uh, Richard Penny has just pulled out of the pit. It was a routine stop. He changed tires on the other side. But there's work is being done on Pete Hamilton's car. This is his second stop. And it's been a costly succession of stops for the blonde Daytona 500 winner. They have the hood up, so the problem is mechanical. Under the hood of number 40. We noticed earlier that the car looked squirrely on the track, and they've set the front suspension a little bit. But Pete looks calm. We're going to try and get a word with him while the crewmen are working on the car. Up, oh, it looks as though they're about ready. They're going to change the uh, inside rubber now. The inside rubber is being changed, and we can't get close to him, or we'd be in the mechanic's way. The outside rubber was changed, and Hamilton is in the pits a long time. He wants to get out now before the safety car comes by. And once the safety car passes the straightaway, now Pete Hamilton is, as of now, one lap down on the field. He has lost the lap by waiting in the pits too long. What the trouble is under the hood, we cannot say as yet. We do not have vision in that area of the car. 
but the petty crew seems to be just a bit confused this July 4th in this Land Tracker 400. Back to you, Jim. Okay, Chris, so that's the story. Pete Hamilton dropping further and further behind as he sits in the pits. Back out on the track, the yellow flag out. Charlie Glatzbach has moved into the picture, by the way, in car number 99. As they proceed under the yellow flag, we'll go away, and we'll be right back. Again, we're back at Daytona, and sitting at the driver's wheel of that car number 36 is Donald Tarr, doctor of medicine. There he is, Dr. Don Tarr, North Miami Beach, Florida, who is in fact a regular doctor. And listen to him. Man, they don't know what they're missing out here in this heat. The good Jim engineer said the tire temperatures would probably run over 230 degrees. Now that's on the tires themselves. Uh, the track temperature must therefore be something like about 150. Uh, I imagine in the car the temperature is about 140 degrees right now. That's, that, that's my... Uh, that's my judgment talking, though. I, I feel like it's about 300 degrees. Whew. I must have sweat off about eight gallons already, Jim. We're doing all right, sir, I think. Oh, he's giving us a one lap set for signal. So, uh, on the next time around, they'll uh, give us the road time. Now, Buddy wants to get ahead of me. I don't think that's right. Remember, you're listening to Dr. Don Carr speaking from inside his race car as they proceed under the yellow flag. He's in that car number 36. I'll just move up here after you hot dogs go by. I'll go by with you. That's all. I'll get behind uh, 16 here and uh, get right up alongside Leroy. When that flag drops, I, I'll probably have to go to the inside of the 16 and 45. That's still safer. I'm running quite a bit faster than they are. Dr. Leroy just waved at me. Well, Leroy's my teacher. Not everything I know about these tracks I learned from Leroy. He's a good guy. I'd like to get him driving a Dodge or a Plymouth. You're going to get a green flag. You're going to be racing again. That was Dr. Don Tarr you were listening to. Sizing things up for you from inside his race car. The green flag out as they hit for that first turn. This is going to be a real... Gang is all on the lead. And it's Leroy Arbro, car number 98, taking the lead. David Pierce in the number 17 is in second place. Richard Petty's in there, car number 43, up a little bit higher. See him? He's in third position. So it's Leroy Arbro, David Pearson, Richard Petty. Then number 71 is Bobby Isaac. And number six is Buddy Baker. Those are the top five cars right now, and they're all bunched very, very closely together. Great racing on a hot afternoon at Daytona Beach, Florida. And David Pearson now going for the lead. Pearson taking the lead from Leroy Yarbrough. For the first time today, David's out in front. He was the Grand National Champion last year. Has won that title three times. The only other man who did that was Lee Petty, the father of the man who's currently in third place, Richard Petty. So Pearson's given a unique reason for not going for the championship this year. He has three boys. He said he wanted a championship ring for each of them. They have their ring, so he said there's no need to go for the title this year. Well, of course, you have to run in a lot more races on these smaller tracks and so forth for less money in order to win that Grand National Point Championship. That's why Bobby Isaac can be leading for that this year, although he's not the leading money winner. It's a tough grind to win the title. You really have to work for it. But David Pearson is out in front on one of the big tracks right now here at Daytona in number 17. And now Leroy Yarbrough is going at him again. You know, Jim, these drivers have great respect for one another, especially the leading pros, to run this fast, this close together. Well, Leroy has the lead again. Pearson is second. Richard Petty is third. Richard has moved up very swiftly when his teammate, Pete Hamilton, dropped out of the race with engine problems very early in the going. Then, number 71, Bobby Isaac, number six, Buddy Baker, the two red cars, if you're watching in color, that are trailing the first three. Very close, Jim. All those cars are in the very same lap running up there, and it could be anyone's race.
There again, Leroy Yarbrough, the leader. David Pearson, second. Richard Pettington, car number 43. We'll try to get these numbers in your head so that you can identify them along with us. Look how close that is for the lead. Ninety-eight Yarbrough, seventeen Pearson, forty-three Petty, seventy-one Isaac. Six is Baker. And they're all in the picture at once. Jim, the report from the Goodyear technicians is that the track temperature is one hundred forty-two degrees, and the tread temperatures on the tires they've been changing in the pits two hundred sixty-five degrees. Wow. There's Buddy Baker beginning to move up. He's taken over fourth place from Bobby Isaac and is challenging. Richard Petty, that's Buddy Baker down low on the track, closer to the infield, trying to move back into contention. You know, one of the really proud men in the pits is Buck Baker, the father of Buddy, who's watched him come along. And David Pearson goes for the lead. Yet again, can he get it? He's got it. Pearson, the leader. Leroy Arbor, second. Richard Petty, third. But Buddy Baker coming on very fast. Firecracker 400 continues, and look what's happened. Buddy Baker has taken the lead, flashing past the cars who were in front of him when we left. Remember, he had moved up into third position, but now he is the leader. Leroy Arborough second, David Pearson third, and Richard Petty fourth. That's the way they stand at this moment. Other sports events today, we'll try to keep you up to date on some of them. In the U.S. Women's Open out in Oklahoma, the foul championship, the betting champion Donna Capone is three under par through 14 holes. Sandra Haney is even through 16. Sandy Spuzic, a former champion, is even through 17. And Carol Mann is plus one through 14. And tomorrow afternoon, ABC Sports will be bringing you the final round of the U.S. Women's Open. Take that one in. But look at this racing still. Jim, up in Michigan at the Michigan International Speedway, it was Gary Fettenhausen, the winner of the 200-mile National Championship Open cockpit car race over Bobby Unser and Johnny Rutherford. And Buddy Baker is still the leader here at Daytona, closely followed by Leroy Yarbrough. There they are. There are eight cars on the same lap now, but all eight of them are pretty close together. At number six, Buddy Baker, 98, Leroy Yarbrough, 17, David Pearson, 43, Richard Petty, 71, Bobby Isaac, 99, Charlie Glotzbach, 22, Bobby Allison, and 27, Donnie Allison. They are the brothers running in seventh and eighth. That U.S. Women's Open Golf Championship will be live tomorrow, of course, from Muskogee, Oklahoma, beginning at 4.30 Eastern Daylight Time, tomorrow afternoon on ABC. All of the cars you see are in the race. They're on the same lap. And they're within the same couple of hundred yards. Buddy Baker. There he is. In his wing of dodge. Followed by Leroy Arbro. David Pearson. Richard Petty. All in the picture right now. Those are your top four. They're still approaching 190 miles an hour of lap speed, Jim. But the yellow flag has brought the race speed down to a low of 162.7. This is some of the closest racing we've seen in a, well, in a year or more down here at Daytona. I guess on any of the super speedways. NASCAR through the years has been famous for very close races and close finishes. Uh, but in recent months, it seems we've seen a lot of them that have, uh, have not been that close. Well, <clears throat> it's just the breaks of the game. Here, I think we're going to see a close one all day. You know, there's more than money up there in this one, Jim. The high-ranking officials of the Chrysler Corporation and the Ford Motor Company are here hoping that their particular machines come home first. And these drivers know that 1971 contracts hinge on how well they do. So they're out to try and get the most from their machine. Okay, well, right now it's Buddy Baker's Dodge that's out in front. Leroy Yarbrough's Ford that's in second place. And there goes the Ford. Pass the Dodge. Leroy Yarbrough has taken the lead again. Oh, there must have been six, seven, or eight lead changes already in this race. Uh, quite a few, Jim. Uh, they've been shuffling back and forth. Uh, sometimes there's two lead changes within a single lap. There again, you can see Buddy Baker getting out of the draft of Leroy Yarbrough to keep the air coming into that small opening on the razor-edge nose of that Dodge Daytona Charger. They've 
concerned about overheating, Jim. The driver in first place right now, Leroy Yarbrough from Columbia, South Carolina, 31 years old. Last year, he won $188,605 on the NASCAR circuit. The speed still very, very high. Somewhere near the 190 mile an hour mark. Average speed for these early laps is a record for this race so far. Buddy Baker, Jim, on his fourth lap turned 190.2. Four, and that stands right now as the fastest lap of the race so far. 190 miles per hour, per hour around this two and a half mile oval. Tremendous going. But Buddy is still only second at the moment to Leroy Yarbrough. Yarbrough, who in his NASCAR career has won 13 races, finished second and third many times. Buddy Baker, who's only won two races, as we said, and he's in his 12th season with NASCAR. Now Buddy taking the lead again. Jim, this bad news, Fred Lorenzen is out with a broken timing chain. The comeback kid that hoped to win this one, but uh, he's out of it now. The bachelor from Elmhurst, Illinois. Freddie, who was the big money winner on the NASCAR circuit, dropped out for three years, but just couldn't stay away. Here's Charlie Glotz back coming into the pit. Boy, he's on the brakes getting that number 99 Dodge stop. Smoking the tires coming into the pit. Paul Goldsmith and Ray Nichols concerned with this car. This could be a costly one time-wise because he overshot the pit a little bit. As you saw, they had to move the car back again. Every second counts, Jim, and uh, the green flag is out right now, and it's a very precious thing, time, when the green flag is out. Should the yellow flag come out, you'll see all of the pit because, as Chris indicates, uh, you can save a lot of time that way. You can go back and resume your place on the race course as long as the field doesn't pass by you while you're in the pit. But when that green is out, boy, you're losing places all the time. Racetrack, you're watching the leaders still. That's Buddy Baker, Leroy Yarbrough. Just keep an eye on them every second. There's Glotz back out again, but it was a long one, 47.50 seconds. He lost considerably more than a lap on that one. Jim, you know, down the back straightaway, they say it's the fastest ride in stock car racing, and the speed now go well over 200 miles an hour. Buddy Baker inside that racing stock car is the biggest driver on the circuit. He's about six feet, four inches tall. A very pleasant, easy, soft-spoken gentleman. Tough competitor, though, Jim. He is that. Buddy Baker, the leader. Leroy Yarborough, second. Remember, it's Richard Petty in third place. David Pearson is fourth. And there they are. And nose to tail are Buddy Baker and Leroy Yarborough. Looks like they're tied together with a piece of rope. And there are Petty and Pearson third and fourth place. As you can see, it wouldn't take much for them to get into the lead. There you're standing. Still too early in the race to see what the strategy is going to be on pit stops and what effect they may have on the race. None of the leaders have made a stop. So far, there's been no request for relief driving, Jim. They're a hardy bunch in this heat. As around and around they go, this two and a half mile pi oval, as they call it. You can see it's not absolutely oval in shape. Oh, that was Don Parr hitting the wall in the fourth turn. Let's see if he's saying anything. On the other side. On the other side. That's him. On the other side. We hit the wall up there. Again, there have been changes in the standings in the Firecracker 400 at Daytona Beach, Florida. The leader is still Buddy Baker, but in second place now in car number 17 is last year's Grand National NASCAR champion, David Pearson. Leroy Yarbrough, who had been dueling with Buddy Baker for the lead, has dropped back to about fifth. There is Bobby Isaac, who has moved up into third position in the race now. Bobby Allison, number 22, is in fourth place, Jim. Dodgers are moving here. 
Yes, they are. Fifth place, as we said, is Leroy Arbor, number 98, and sixth place, number 27, Donnie Allison. So the two Allisons are now running in fourth and sixth position. Well placed. They're not out of it. The average at this point, Jim, is 161.741 miles per hour. That's two yellow flags so far. Okay, and there is David Pearson getting by Buddy Baker. David Pearson taking the lead in the race again. Buddy Baker is second. And again, Buddy's going to go for the lead. Classic racing at the Daytona International Speedway. Buddy Baker has the lead yet again. I wonder if a driver can ever feel comfortable in second place, Jim. There he was sitting behind Pearson with the speed to go by, but he just has to go in front of him. That's right. That's why they call them racing drivers. That's what they like to do. Next week, by the way, Wide World of Sports is going to pre preempt this, but just for another great sports event. It's another week can bring you coverage by satellite of the final round of the British Open Golf Championship from the old course at St. Andrews, Scotland. British Open, 5 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time, 4 Central, and 5 Pacific Daylight Time next Saturday on ABC. Again, a look at the standings. Remember, Buddy Baker, who's been in this thing from the start, back in the lead, David Pearson is second, and looking more threatening all the time. Isaac is third, and Allison is fourth. Gives you an idea of how they love this stock car racing in the Southland. Here in Florida today, as we said, the temperature almost to the 100 degree mark, and 55,000 people or more have gathered on this roiling sun to watch the race. They're seeing a great show, Jim, hot as it is. The beach is nearby for when the checkered flag falls. That's right. I saw one man down in the stands, right in the sun, wearing a jacket and tie. The ultimate gentleman. Britisher, no doubt. That's right. And imagine what it's like inside the race cars out there. You heard Don Carr describe it. He, he said, as a conservative guess, he'd say 140 degrees, but it felt like 300. The car's racing without windows, and the drivers say that that makes it hotter, not cooler inside. That's right, Jim. The uh, car rushing through the air uh, creates a vacuum, and the heat of the engine is pulled through the floorboard onto the driver. And it's actually hotter inside with the windows down than it used to be with the windows up. Okay, we're going to get a lap timing on the lead car. We'll convert the seconds into miles per hour when Buddy Baker comes around. Of course, by the time he gets around, it could be he wouldn't be the leader. Look at David Pearson hanging right there. under 50 seconds is going to be very, very fast. It looks like they might be. They're coming down off the banking, onto the slider banking in the home stretch. Headed for the start-finish line, and there it is, 48.80. That is 184.46 miles per hour. In traffic, Jim, and that's not slow-poking it around the Daytona International Speedway. I should say it is. Chris, with Buddy Baker out in front with that wing of Dodge, we might discuss the uh, airfoil effects of that. And perhaps also, what does it do to the guy in back? Well, the reason for that vertical stabilizer, the people at Chrysler don't like it referred to as a wing. They call it a, not a vertical stabilizer, but a horizontal stabilizer. The air rushing over that depresses the back end and forces the rear wheels more firmly on the track, thereby giving it more traction. Uh, parasitically, there is Leroy Yarborough into the pits. He had been the leader, had dropped back to fifth, and now he's having trouble. Go on, Chris. By giving the rear wheels more traction on the paving, they can take the corners faster. The car does not tend to slip to the side. And the drafting uh, is more difficult. That disturbs the air flowing over the back of the car, and to draft one of the wing Dodges or wing Plymouths is a more of a difficult job than drafting a car without a wing, the drivers say. So it works for the fellow driving the car and against the fellow just behind him, in this case, David Pearson in car number 17. That car number 17, a 1969 Ford. And Leroy Yarbrough in the pits, and it looks like the word is, that's all for this afternoon.
Looks like Leroy Yarborough has had it after being a top contender. So both Yarborough and Yarbrough are out of the race. That's Junior Johnson's car. And here on the back stretch, car number 89 has spun into the infield. That's Gary Dupuis. Trucks are out, the yellow flag is out, and we'll be back. Well, we told you it was just about at the 100 degree mark. There you see it, 98 degrees. That's Daytona. Out on the track, Dr. Don Carr is talking again in his car. Let's listen to him. Uh, the heat out here on the track probably is something like about uh, 230 degrees on the surface itself. They're under the yellow flag at this moment. Well, I got that all wrong. Uh, the tires are heating up to probably about 250 degrees. Uh, I think the, the good your engineers keep pretty good track of that. You might just always run it in. But uh, in the car, I would say the heat is something like uh, oh, 150 degrees. It feels like it's about 350 degrees. <laughs> uh, we have realistic, I guess about 150 degrees. Uh, Okay. All right, Don. The green flag is out. They're racing again. And it's going to be David Pearson taking the lead in car number 70, 17, 71. Bobby Isaac is in second place. And 27, Donnie Allison. As you can see, there's been a lot of shuffling. There are a lot of pit stops under the yellow flag. There is David Pearson, though. 17, 71 is Bobby Isaac. And the official NASCAR report is that Gary Dupuis of the Leon Spring, Florida, who spun out just a while ago at car number 89, is okay, no injuries at all. We had an interesting development during a Richard, uh, Richard Petty pit stop, Jim. The garden hose, they used to spray the radiator. The pressure had been let out of the tank, and they couldn't cool the front end down. So it's <laughs> a rather unique malfunction in the Petty pit. <laughs> okay, it's still David Pearson, number 17, in the lead. Number 71, Bobby Isaac is second. In third place now, as he said, is Donnie Allison, number 27. Then Buddy Baker, number six, who had been the leader, with all the pit stops and shuffling, and then the green flag coming out. Baker dropped back. And then number 22, Bobby Allison. Leroy Yarbrough, we pointed out earlier, looks like he's going to be out of the race. He is, in fact, out with engine failure. Kind of a tough 1970 for Leroy, isn't it? He had a big year last year, but he hasn't been able to cut it yet in 1970, Jim. Hasn't won a super speedway race this year. Won seven of them last year. But David Pearson was the NASCAR champion on a point basis last season, and he's the leader in this race right now. Isaac, who is second, is the point le leader so far in 1970. Again, we'll take a timing on the leader, see if that speed is holding up. Next Sunday, by the way, we hope a lot of you people in the New Jersey area will be turning out to see the Trenton 300. That's Sunday, July 12th, not tomorrow, July 12th. The Sunday after that, July 19th, there'll be a 500 lap race at Bristol, Tennessee, the Volunteer 500 at the Bristol International Speedway. We hope you'll go to those events if you're anywhere near that area. But then three weeks from now, on July 25th, live on Wide World of Sports, we hope you'll be with us to see the Grand National Stock Car Race at Nashville, Tennessee. The Nashville area will be blacked out on that one. That's for Wide World of Sports, July 25th, 5 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. And here is the timing coming up. 48.95, Chris. And the speed on that, Jim, is 184.049 miles an hour. So the speed's holding up very, very well in the going here. We've passed the 100 lap mark now, 160 laps in this 400 mile race. Pearson, the leader, but Buddy Baker is coming up again, and here he comes, moving into second place. And along with him comes Donnie Allison, number 27. So Buddy Baker just won't quit this afternoon. We have it's five cars in the same lap, Jim. The first five. That's right. At 17, David Pearson, six, Buddy Baker, 27. Donnie Allison, 71, Bobby Isaac, and 22, Bobby Allison.
Jim, Pete Hamilton, the winner of the Daytona 500, is out of it. The ignition trouble on his number 40 Plymouth has sidelined him, so he's standing by now in Richard Petty's pit just in case his boss wants some help. And the racing is still side by side. David Pearson, Buddy Baker, and Buddy Baker's out in front again. We said it's been a long drought for him, about two years since he's won a race. And every time he gets down this afternoon, he just puts his foot down and gets back in it again. Buddy's father, by the way, was in a race here last night that they had at midnight. Boy, the crowd on their feet just about all of the time watching this tremendous, exciting racing. It's been this way since the start, if you just joined us on Wide World. And from the looks of things, it'll be this way until the finish of this 400-mile race. Buddy Baker, David Pearson, Donnie Allen, all on your screen there, or they were. Now just the two leaders, Buddy and David. Chris indicated early, David Pierce is taking it a little bit easier, and here coming into the pit is Wendell Scott, number 34, and it looks like Wendell may have blown his engine. Yes, the yellow flag is out. Wendell Scott blowing an engine and wasting no time going behind the pit wall. There it is. Yellow flag out for another time here this afternoon at Daytona. Okay, Leroy, sorry to see you out of it. What was the trouble? Well, I believe, actually, there at the last press that I broke a valve and the engine went to missing, and I was waiting on a caution flag because it acted like a plug wire came off for a while, and then I could hear it kind of spitting, sort of, then I pulled it in and put it behind the wall. Has the heat been a problem? Was the heat a problem for you? It sure was. I believe today is probably 25 degrees hotter than my car than I've ever seen it down here. It's really hot. We were noticed you and Pete Hamilton were having at it pretty hot and heavy in the early going. What, what was the situation there? Well, Pete was running real good, and it looked like that maybe we could get away from the rest of the guys, and just he and I could race together. And uh, it didn't work out that way. We had a caution flag, and then we all got bunched up again. Did you two fellows hit one another? No, I don't think we ever touched. We just probably got close. Yeah. Uh, Laurel Arbor, last year's big winner in stock car racing, now a pedestrian. Thank you, Jim. All right, Chris. A pedestrian he is for the rest of the afternoon. On this muggy, hot afternoon, you can literally see the humidity hanging in the air. We return to the Daytona International Speedway and the Firecracker 400. We're, we're about to move into the closing stages of the race. The leader, Buddy Baker in car number six. David Pearson, number 17, is second. Then Donnie Allison and Bobby Allison, the brothers from Hueytown, Alabama, racing third and fourth. And there goes David Pearson for the lead past Buddy Baker. This is the way it's been all afternoon. David Gene Pearson, 35 years old, from Spartanburg, South Carolina. He's won 57 NASCAR races in a career that started in the year 1960. Buddy Baker has won only two. Jim, uh... A little side here, our onboard announcer, Dr. Don Carr, despite hitting the wall, has pushed that car into ninth place, doing a fine job talking his way right through the traffic. By the time the race is over, Dr. Don just could be the leading independent driver, maybe. David Pearson is the leader, however. We'd like to make a quick mention here that uh, Bob Montgomery, who worked with us all through the winter and spring down in the pit area on Wide World and on uh, ABC's special racing series, is in the hospital. Bob isn't feeling well at all. He's in the Wesley Long Hospital in Greensboro, North Carolina. Our best to you, Robert. We hope they're letting you watch today. We hope you'll be back with us soon. Back to see things like this. Pearson and Baker still at it. Hammer and Tom. And behind them, remember, the brothers, Allison. Donnie in car number 27 is third. Bobby in number 22 is fourth. A little far back to get into it right now. It looks like a two-car race at this point. Jim, this may be the last of the truly high-speed races we see at the Daytona International Speedway. For 1971, the ruling body, ACUS, has decreed that engine sizes will be made smaller, 366 cubic inch maximum. And there we've got a lead driver lead change. 
And uh, these are 430-inch maximum engines, and they'll go to 366 next year, which should cut the speed down. Okay, well, it's David Pearson, the leader. Buddy Baker second and dropping Jet back just a little bit. The last lead change was the 30th lead change in this race, by the way, and here comes Buddy Baker into the pits. Now, we move into the decisive moment. Each car has to take one more pit stop. Buddy Baker has decided to take his right now. He probably has to because his first stop came earlier than had been expected. He's going to fuel up now, now, get whatever he needs in the way of rubber, and go back out on the track. If his stop now is faster than David Pearson turns out to be later, and David must make another stop, but he could win the race. On the other hand, if David's pit stop is faster, he could be the winner. It could be decided by the pit crews today. Chrissy Katamaki down in the pits right now. Let's go down to him. For him. Pulling out of the pits now in the flat low one's garage number six. This is the last spot for Baker, number six, and he has a chance to win as Pearson and number 17 will also have to make one more stop. And here's a case of where the pit crew can win or lose a race for a driver. Back to you, Jim. Right, Chris, and you saw the timing of that pit stop on the screen, 21.70 seconds. Remember that, 21.7. If David Pearson turns out to be faster than that, in all probability, he'll have the lead and could win the race. So at this moment, Pearson is the leader. In second place now is car number 27, Donnie Allison, and third place, number 22, Bobby Allison. However, all three of them must make a pit stop before this race is over. Pearson, we said, has won 57 races in his career. Last year, he won his third Grand National Championship at $183,700. And right now, there were the brothers battling for second place. The Allisons, Donnie and Bobby. Donnie Allison, by the way, finished fourth in the Indianapolis 500 this year, which is the best finish that any NASCAR driver has ever had out of the Brickyard. The fourth Rookie of the Year honors for him, Jim, and he's quite proud of that. But David Pearson is still the man of the hour here and looking better all the time. But remember, it still all depends on his pit stop yet to come. There are the brothers on the bottom of your screen battling for a second place, and on the top of the split screen is the leader by himself, David Pearson. Buddy Baker is still very close to Pearson on the track, as you see, but he is a little bit less than a lap behind at this moment because of the pit stop he made. These drivers have a long, long season, and most of it is conducted down here in the south, where during the summer months it is so hot, draining a man of his energy. Anybody says that race drivers are not athletes, they ought to try one of these races sometime. Jim, the cars are being driven by David Pearson. It's a 1969, not a 1974, and it's the Talladega model, which has the long nose, uh, more aerodynamically suited to this type of racing. The 70 models uh, won't go quite as fast on this racetrack as last year's model. And still we stand by, kind of waiting for that other shoe to drop, waiting for David Pearson to decide to take that pit stop, to see how long it is, and then to see if he's still ahead of Buddy Baker and the brothers Allison. Looks like he's going to stretch it out as long as he can, perhaps waiting to see if there might be a yellow flag. That's uh, true, but the pit crew is waving him to come in, Jim. They want him in. They're afraid he's going to run out of gas. And there you saw the relationship from the second and third place cars, the Allison brothers, to David Pearson, who is the leader. At Daytona, we're still waiting for David Pearson to come in for his final pit stop of the afternoon in the Firecracker 400. He's the leader, but again, he must pit one more time. Buddy Baker, car number six, whom you see seemingly out in front at the moment, but he's almost a lap behind. Buddy has already made his final pit stop. There's the leader, Pearson. And the Allison brothers are running second and third. Donnie in car number 27. Bobby in car number 22. They play kind of a waiting game all through the afternoon, but as other cars have fallen by the wayside, they get closer and closer to the front. Now let's go down. Now here into the pit is David Pearson. This is going to be it. 
Stand by and watch the clock. Remember, it took Buddy Baker 21.70 seconds. The clock will start as soon as the wheels have stopped. The clock will restart as soon as the wheels begin in the move again. Fantastically well-trained pit crews on the NASCAR circuit. Up on top, you see Buddy Baker going around the, the track. You will be keeping an eye. A tremendous pit stop, 20.65. Better than a second faster than Buddy Baker. Baker right now racing around the track, but Pearson getting tremendous acceleration. That car does have a four-speed four speed forward gearbox, and he is using it to the best advantage. One of the fastest accelerations out of the pits I've seen, and it looks like he's going to stay ahead of Buddy Baker. Let's see what David had to say to Chrissy Kotomaki when he talked to him before the race today. Is there any one place here at Daytona, David, that you have to be especially careful about? No, uh, also the parents, uh, the car is real loose, and even through the dog leg, you're on the front stretch, it gets kind of loose, especially when you draft it. And uh, four or five years ago, we could run here, and, uh, two or three abreast, and draft, and uh, run real good close together. But now, it's, uh, you're running so fast that you just can't pass through the corner like you used to. David, you use the term loose. Just what do you mean by that? Well, that means that the uh, car is like it's fixing to spin out on you, and uh, it just floating in there. Well, there you have it from David Pearson, the defending champion. Well, that was David talking before the race, and there he is out there right now after that tremendous fast pit stop and fast acceleration out of the pit. You know, when you read the racing magazine, they sh show you the acceleration from 0 to 60 of many makes of automobiles. This was from 0 to 185. Pretty quick, uh, crew chief, Dick Hutcherson, a former driver, knows what it means to a driver to have to work so hard for a few seconds advantage and then lose them in the pits. And Dick gets them out just as soon as possible. Less than 15 laps left in the race right now. There's Buddy Baker. You saw the red car with the wing or airfoil on the back. And 17, stretching it out over him now. Slower car being given the sign to move over. And into the pits comes Richard Petty, and this time it's for good. Richard has been in and out all through the course of the afternoon after running well in the early going, but now he's finished for today. Richard having his tough breaks this season. We saw him in what appeared to be a terrible crash not too long ago in Wide World of Sports that he came away from with just a hurt left arm, which seems to be okay now. But he's out of the race today. The leader is David Pearson. He's got a three-and-a-half second lead and may coast to victory. At Daytona, there are just about 10 laps left in the race, and it looks like David Pearson is going to be able to hold on to this lead and go to victory. He's been stretching it out over Buddy Baker. Almost at will, it seems that Buddy's slowing down, and right now there is Donnie Allison challenging Buddy Baker for second place, and there goes Donnie past Buddy, almost as if he was standing still. Buddy definitely slowing down. Donnie Allison taking over second position in the race. Jim Richard Cuddy was the 23rd driver to leave the race on this hot July 4th morning. There's only 17 drivers left on the track now. Okay, and there are the top four. You see the Allison brothers running second and fourth. Pearson first and Baker third. Remember, next week, Wide World preempts it for our satellite coverage of the British Open Golf Championship from St. Andrews, Scotland. But two weeks from today, Wide World will be back at its regular time with the International Invitational Swimming and Diving Championship from Santa Clara, California. That's the big swimming meet of the summer. Hope you're with us for that one. Right now, the battle is for second and third, not for the lead, because David Pearson continues to extend it. He has more, he has a 4.8 second lead now. We have three drivers now in the uh, same lap. Our fourth place man, uh, Charlie Glassback, is a lap down, and the rest of the field is uh, even more in arrears. And there is the leader. No problems up front there, it appears. David gliding through the turns, roaring down the straightaways, probably taking a glance in the rearview mirror from time to time, make sure that nobody's coming up too fast, and nobody is. The crowd ready to pay its tribute to him. We're going to get an interval timing here, see what the difference is between him and Donny Allison in second place, where you can see already that it's plenty. Lower cars again getting the move over flag. 10.05 seconds. That's a long way with about six laps to go. And that's the biggest lead anyone has enjoyed during the race so far today, Jim. 
That's right. It's the only time during the course of this race that anybody has had a big lead. It's been very, very close all the time. And there is Pearson. And back to second and third. Donnie Allison and Buddy Baker. Looks like Buddy Baker is not to win a race. That drought that's been going on for two years for him is going to continue, it would seem. How these cars have stood the tremendous heat out here and the pace of speed, it's, it's almost impossible to believe. Tight fight for second, Jim. Yes, it is. Buddy, who was dropping back, now seems to be able to hang on to Donnie. Although there, Donnie begins to move it out just a little bit. Both of them, remember, more than 10 seconds behind David Pearson. Pearson well up in front of the two cars you're watching. There he is. Going through the turn yet again, moving up high. It's funny how these drivers like to have the same car number year in and year out. David Pearson always drives number 17. Well, after a while, it makes it a little bit easier to call a race, doesn't it, Chris? That's right. Most circuits, the driver's number is dependent on his point finish the year before. That's right. Then USAC, the Indianapolis Stars, for example, the man who wins the championship the year before is number one. But number 17 is last year's champion on this circuit, David Pearson. And there he is, counting off the lap. Something happened. It looked like he hit the wall. The leader, the leader is in trouble. His right front fender is battered. There it looks the like a... Jim, the, the tire went and it rode on the inner liner for a while. And halfway down the back stretch, that safety inner liner let go. Pearson now has a damaged right front corner on that car. It's a tough break. It most certainly will cost him the race. An unbelievable development with just a few laps left in the Firecracker 400. David Pearson, with more than a 10-second lead, is going to be out of the race, it looks like. He certainly lost the lead. Here it is in slow motion. How it happened to David Pearson, a real heartbreaker for him. Where the tire exploded through the upper fender, Jim. The tire burst there on the track and broke through the top of the fender. And this puts Donnie Allison, number 27, in the first position. That's the new leader, number 27, back in a minute. It looks like Donnie Allison may have inherited this race here. In car number 27, he's the leader. Buddy Baker in car number six is second, but dropping back again. And in third place, number 22, Bobby Allison. Not quite the final standing set on the Cooper position. Donnie Allison still has a way to go, and the way things have been developing this afternoon, stay with us. There's Buddy Baker in second place. Well, car owner Banjo Matthews must be happy, Jim. He's had a tough, lot of tough luck uh, since he quit driving and became a car owner. And Donnie Allison is his driver. He prepares a great automobile for him. Donnie, who has won just two races in his NASCAR career, however, he didn't join the circuit until the year 1966. This is his fifth season. Won two races through 1969. This season, however, he's had much better luck. This could be, I believe, his third victory this year. He uh, collected a victory in the World 600 at Charlotte with help, however. He also won a race on a smaller track. I think it was in Bristol. Less than two laps to go now for Donnie Allison. An easy leader over Buddy Baker with his brother, Don Bobby Allison, in third place. Only those three cars on the same lap. Donnie Allison, 30 years old, the younger of the two brothers from Hueytown, Alabama. The father of three sons and a daughter. Donnie, who did so extremely well at Indianapolis this year, posting the best finish ever by a NASCAR driver at Indy. He finished fourth. Buddy Baker in second place. You saw the relationship between them, and the white flag means there's one lap for the leader, and it'll be all over. 
Johnny Allison, who played a waiting game all through the race, along with his brother Bobby, for most of the going, they were right together around fifth and sixth place, trading those places back and forth, although they're not teammates, remember, it was a mere coincidence. But now it is Johnny who has inherited this race in a sense, but has inherited by driving very soundly, very sensibly, and a very intelligent strategic race. Buddy Baker there, who's won only two races in his 12 years in the NASCAR circuit, will not win this one. It's going to be Johnny Allison. One more turn to negotiate, and he's got it all wrapped up. Here he is, one of the prides of Hueytown, Alabama, coming to the checkered flag. Johnny Allison has won the Firecracker 400. Buddy Baker is second. Johnny Bobby Allison is third and in fourth place, a lap behind Charlie Glotzbach in car number 99. Was it a surprising win for you as it was for us, Donnie? Yeah, it was, Chris. You know, uh, all week my car hadn't been running. And uh, Junior was kind enough to lend us the engine last night. We put it in there, and it was brand new. It hadn't had any miles on it at all before the day started. But the car finally got to running pretty good towards the end of the race. And uh, I know if David didn't have a little bad luck, that uh, I probably wouldn't have won the race. But uh, his bad luck was my good luck. You've had bad luck before, haven't you? I sure have, Chris. Did you know that Junior's engine that he used in the race uh, failed during the contest? Yeah, I, when I came by Leroy, I noticed his engine was missing, and I said, well, I really feel bad about it because I had it brand new and in my car. What about the heat, Johnny, and the effect of the windows being down? Well, it was hot, Chris, but uh, it didn't seem to bother me all that bad. I, I worked hard all day, and so I didn't have time to think really about the heat. What kind of a race was it for you? Well, I run just as hard as I could run all day. All day. Okay, the winner of the Firecracker 400, Johnny Allison. And for the agony of defeat, here is David Pearson. David, what was it actually that put you out of the race? Well, Chris, when I went in number two corner up there, all at once the tire blew, and I must have run over something. I don't know what it was. Did you have any warning? No, uh, everything was going lovely. In fact, uh, I was just thinking about eight more laps to go when they gave me the sign, and I'd already pulled away from it in 15 seconds, so I was feeling real good. The right front corner of the car looked badly damaged. Well, that's where the uh, rubber of the tire flew off and come up and knocked the hole in the fender. What did that little pop cost you, David? Well, I don't know for sure, but I know uh, that makes about $75,000 I've given done it this year. Donnie Allison, the winner. The car will be easy to fix for the next big one? Oh, yes. Yeah, so all we have to do is uh, just put a fender on it and maybe just straighten that one. I see you have your youngsters with you. Are they sad about what happened? Oh, yeah, because well, they, uh, they told me earlier they just thought I already had it won, which uh, I've done it for myself. Well, better luck next time, David Pearson. Thank you, Chris. Well, there you had the winner and the loser of the Firecracker 400. The standing, Donny Allison, the winner, Buddy Baker, second, Bobby Allison, third, Charlie Glotzbach was fourth, Dick Brooks, fifth, Dr. Don Saar, our mobile commentator, finished the most creditable sixth, James Hilton was seventh, David Pearson placed eighth, ninth was Bobby Isaac, and tenth was Neil Castle.